I'm a huge, huge fan of circle prospecting. Okay. I, I love circle prospecting and I love it for many ways. I have fun with circle because to me, it's just talking to random people. You know, it's, it's doing it from a position of, you don't want to pressure them. I would say, I would say in some way you probably pulled pressure off. That's the name of the game right now. Okay. If you could have a conversation and ask some questions with no pressure at all, that's where you're going to have that reaction and that strength come in from the calls. So, you know, the one way to, to do that is, you know, focus on your mindset and look at what's throwing your mindset off. Hi, I'm Noelle with Today's Brew, where top producing real estate agents share their tips and tricks on taking more listings, making more money and having fun doing it. On today's episode, we welcome Coach Joe Bowlick from Tom Ferry. How are Hi, you, Noel, Joe? How are you? Good. I'm, I'm well, good. thanks. Did I do okay with your last name? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, Bowlick. As long as it's close, I'm happy with it. <laughs> okay. So, Joe, you're out of Connecticut, yes? Correct. Okay. Um, and how long have you been a coach? Uh, I've been a coach and trainer since about 2010. What led you in that direction? Uh, I think that's a good question. I think it was, I started producing and I started very quickly seeing the challenges that other agents had. So it was, you know, hey, let me try to help out as well. Let me try to be involved with that portion of it and, you know, take those good agents that were just struggling with, you know, doing the certain things to get them past that. What what are those certain things that then are there probably the same things now, but for people that aren't familiar uh, with coaching so much, um, what what are the things that you help people do? Well, it's it you know the the thing that I fall back to all the time. It's the thing that I started with. It's prospecting, um, you know, lead generation, having conversations, making calls. Call it what you will. It's all the same thing. Uh, when I looked at it, it's the quickest way from point A to point B, quickest way to a paycheck, quickest way to business. So, you know, that obviously, you know, hit home for me. Plus, I was also that agent in the beginning that my database really wasn't established. You know, I didn't know a lot of people. I didn't know a lot of ways to go into my database. So it just made sense. And honestly, it's nothing's changed that that call challenge, that making the phone calls, that reluctance. It's yeah. always been there and it, it'll always be around. It's just a matter of getting past it. I know. So you kind of hit on a couple things right right off the bat. So call reluctance. How how do we handle that? How do we get past it? Well, and that's a that's a good question. I think we have to look at two different things. There's call reluctance where you know we we kind of hesitate to do it, that that drunk monkey inside of us that wants us to be comfortable, doesn't have us move forward. And then there's cre there's call avoidance. You know, I call it CCA. It's creative call avoidance. It's when we do things and put things at a different weight to stop us from doing it. Okay. Um, as far as a couple of things that you could do right off the bat that I've seen that help me and it helps a lot of the agents I coach and train is number one, making sure that you have a process and a presentation, Okay. you know, and then strengthening that process and presentation. So it's so tight, so strong that you want to go out there and present it to the world. You want to go out and get them involved in your process. You know, as weird as that may sound, that sometimes is what holds a lot of agents back because let's be real. If you don't want to go do a presentation or do anything beyond that, you're either not going to make the calls or you're not going to have success in the calls. So do you think that it's people that are not prepared for the listing presentation itself or um, scripts? not being used or a combination of both? Well, I think it's a combination of both. And I think the big thing too is, you know, looking at the scripts, people look at scripts, agents look at scripts and it looks like this big daunting mountain that's in front of them. And when you, when you look at what a script is and I'll simplify it really quickly, mm -hmm. when you look at what a, what a script is, it's simply the intro is who you are and who you're with. It's okay. why you're calling them. And then one great lead in question that leads to discovery questions, mm -hmm. the bridge, the bridge to the close and then the closing. It's really not that complicated when you look at it. And every script starts the same with that, with that, who you are and who you're with, why you're calling and the one great question. So why do you think people still are so hesitant to pick up the phone? Does they, uh, 
I mean, I know that I, I'm an agent too. I don't know if you know that. So <laughs> I was listening to your two different kinds of call reluctance. And I'm like, Hmm, which one am I? <laughs> because it, it happens to newer sure. agents and seasoned agents. It is, it is that fear a little bit, um, or just maybe you get out of touch. So how do you, how do you get people involved? Well, it's, it's, looking at those two things, one generally leads to the other and vice versa. And it could be this big daunting task by the time you get to it. It's simplifying the process. I don't always believe, I know people use the word fear. You know, mm -hmm. I don't think it's a fear as much as it's a discomfort. It's, it's uncomfortable. You know, we've all been there. I mean, you know, no matter what level you get to, a, to as a prospector, you get, you have that beginning where it's a little uncomfortable, you know, and it's, I've told the story many times. I came from the Marine Corps, so I didn't have this fear of people yelling at me. I was yelled at by professional <laughs> train by professional yellers, you know, in the Marine Corps. You're ready so, for it. <laughs> yeah, but I still had that uncomfortable thing because it's that thing we haven't done. It's that fear of the unknown. So the easiest way to get past that fear of the unknown is prepare for every single thing that could possibly happen. And in a call, there's not many. It's they're going to go one way or the other. They're going to say one thing or the other. So be very prepared on what they possibly could say. So it's really just getting out of your own way. <laughs> yeah, sometimes I like. To, yeah, I like to say sometimes you just have to Nike it up and just do it. But you know, lead into that pre that preparation. Make sure one of the things that I did that helped me in the beginning was I took my script, my questions. You know, the, the strength of a script isn't just the questions. That's just an outline. The strength comes in the questions between the questions. Okay. That's the conversation. Okay? okay. So I looked at my initial question, whatever it is, you know, uh, you know, is it still an important goal for you to get the home sold? They're either going to say yes or no, or some variation of that. Okay. So I just wrote down in a word document, I had my script, I put down you know, what their possibilities could be and then what my questions back to them were. So what objections are, I know you are your own broker and you have your own realty company, which is Premier. Yes. Pre yep. Premier Realty and Group. I'm not sure if you're still making calls, but as a coach, yep. you are talking to people who are making a lot of calls. What are the objections that they're hearing lately and how are you encouraging them to get past that? Well, and it, it's funny that you asked that too, Noel, because the objections don't change. I, I've said, I say this to my coaching clients and I tell them the exact truth that I've told my agents in my office. If you ever get an objection that is new that I've never heard of, not a variation of all the other ones, I'll sell <laughs> that person's house for free. I'm pretty <laughs> confident that th they're all the same objections. I mean, it's, we're going to keep the home off the market. We know an agent. Um, you know, where would I go? I don't know what my options are. I don't know if I can get that much money for my home. Uh, you know, whatever those those things are, you know, it's it's going to mm -hmm. be the same. So if we know what the objections are going to be, which we do, mm -hmm. why not just be prepared for them? Why not have a conversation point to talk to them about it? You make it sound so easy. <laughs> it's simple, simple. It's just not easy. <laughs> it's not easy at all. You do, But you do have to show up and do the work. Yeah. That's how it starts. I mean, and I would I would say to that though, it's it is showing up and doing the work, but it's also making sure that you're prepared and having a skill development plan. Mm -hmm. You know, make sure you're role playing, make sure you're practicing. You know, as funny as it sounds, I can't tell you how many times that I said to myself in the beginning, "Hi, my name is Joe and I'm with Banana Realty." My name is Joe. I kept saying that over my intro mm -hmm. over and over again so I could make it me. I could make it sound like me. Yeah. And not like a robot, make it sound yeah. personal. Cause there's a lot of other Joe from banana realty calling them that. Day. <laughs> yeah. And, and every agent has that, that thing in their head that tells them it's not you, it's going to be scripted. It sounds like a robot, it, whatever it is. Well, you know, you internalize, personalize, and then memorize the scripts. So if you internalize mm -hmm. them, it's not going to, it's not going to be scripted. It's going to be you. No, I used to write. So I used to write my listing presentation every, every single day for 30 days to memorize it, just like you said, and, and you really do remember it. <laughs> it is really that yeah. easy. And then, like you said, and there were times when I would read things 
And I'd be like, is this really for real? Like, I'm supposed to say this? That's not what I would say. I would never say that. I don't even understand why I'm asking this. And then, like you said, eventually you're like, oh, okay, this does work. And people do respond. And then it does lead into more questions, like you said, in between the scripted part of the yep. questions. Um, well, you talked a little bit about database too. So what if you're a newer agent and you don't have a database? How do, how do we find people? Well, that's where you guys come in. I mean, that's... <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's... So if you weren't just prospecting, you know, and you don't have a database and, you, you know, but you are but you have a prospecting boot camp. So we're pretty much going to stick to prospecting on this show, right? Well, yeah, but it, when it comes down to, if you don't have a database, how else, you're going to be prospecting in some way. The thing that I don't want agents to get so knee buckled over all the time is the fact that the word prospecting, you know, we're always prospecting. It's so whether you're making a call, it's just mm -hmm. a different way to do it or knocking a door or doing, you know, having a one-off conversation at a coffee shop, whatever it is, you're prospecting. It's just get that script down, you know, get that, yeah. get that ability. But, it, but if you're, if you're an agent that doesn't have a database, then you're starting like I started. And that's where yeah. you've got to get, you know, a, a number provider like you guys, you've got to get comfortable with it. You've got to practice it. You've got to get your skill development plan and just start talking to people because then you can take that list of people you don't know and turn it into that list of people, you know, and literally build your business from that to where you do the hard now. And then it's easy later on. So a coach and prospecting scripts, <laughs> those are the three main things. Maybe, is there anything that I missed? Uh, tie your why to it. Just make sure you understand why you're doing it. You know, the, the one challenge that we have is, you know, one of the challenges we have is a lot of agents will break that chain, that daily chain between their why and having the discipline to do what they need to do. So keep that chain strong, keep your why in front of you. I mean, my why in the beginning well, still is, is, you know, wife, kids, family, those kind of things. There would always be pictures around my prospecting area. I'd have my average commission. I'd have my vision board. I'd have everything around me. So, you know, I was comfortable in that environment and I knew why I was in that environment. And then accountability, adding a, a layer of accountability, or if you're like me, multiple layers of accountability. I was a slippery snake. So <laughs> I had to have multiple la layers of accountability because I'd rather, back then, I'd rather be going to a late lunch with an attorney or golfing or going to the beach or doing something like that. It's really easy for something else to come in the way of what you're supposed to do. Um, I think everybody that watches this, including myself is guilty of that. I mean, laundry, sure. beco laundry becomes fun. <laughs> yeah, well, you, you're like, do I want to fold laundry or do I want to prospect? And all of a sudden you like your, you like your house chores <laughs> because you're well, stressed out about prospecting. <laughs> Yeah, that, that's the creative call avoidance. That's where we take those things and we give them a higher value. We give them a higher weight. So obviously, if you're doing that, where you're putting weight and value on things, the lowest weight and the lowest value is going to go to the thing that you don't like to do or you're uncomfortable doing. So, you know, a lot of agents, including myself in the beginning, you know, I take that time block of prospecting and oh, I'll do it later. I got to do this right now. You know, and then all of a sudden later turns into that time block falling out of the day and oh, I'll just hit it first thing in the morning. Mm -hmm. and, and then, then it never gets done. Repeat, repeat, repeat. Yeah. So, um, all right. So then you would, I would say that prospecting in the morning is what you're going to say most likely, but if you're just getting started, how, how, when would you schedule it? How long would you schedule it for to be realistic and make it, um, a goal that's reachable? Great question. And that that's a question I get all the time. What's the best time to prospect? And I'm going to go with the old saying, whenever you're going to do it. It's oh, you're surprised. I, <laughs> I, well, your morning time is strong. Your morning time is usually when you have the most energy. But quite honestly, it's, you know, Tom said something, said something that caught me years and years ago. It's I don't care where your money comes from as long as it comes. I don't care when agents prospect as long as they prospect. So if you're, you know, if you're saying that you're going to prospect at 4 p.m. and that's where you have it in your time block, well, then walk the there walk after that. Yeah, <laughs> just walk the walk. I mean, that's fine. And then track and measure, you know, see what you're getting back. If you want to have fun with it, because prospecting is fun, you know, you want to have fun, do it at a different time, do the same lead pillar, see what you get the better results. And there you go. In your market for what you're doing, that's where you should be prospecting. 
I like it. I like it a lot. And you surprised me. <laughs> I well, like your answer. That might be my favorite answer. <laughs> well, because I think it's been ingrained in our head that morning is money time and morning is the time you mm -hmm. do that and everything else. And that's fine. I'm fine with that. You know, it's let's just be realistic about it for a minute. Okay. When I first started back 17 years ago, you know, I was one of a few agents calling expired. Okay. I watched the progression. I watched the fact that all of a sudden I was the fourth agent, the fifth agent, the 25th agent, the 30th agent. I mean, let's be realistic, whether you're the first agent or the 400th agent, and no matter what time you're calling, you're going to get the same reaction generally. So it comes down to your skills. It doesn't come down to time of day or where you are positioned in the call or anything else. It comes down to your skill set. Can you have a conversation and convert them and, and sell them on why they should meet with you? That's Absolutely. what it comes down to. And I think sometimes personalities prevail through the phone a little bit too. And some, some sync up better. I mean, I know that I've made my calls and I've had, you know, a few people be like, I don't know why I'm talking to you. You should hear what I say to the other people. And I'm like, well, sure. I don't know, but I like it. <laughs> when do you want to meet? <laughs> yeah. But, um, but then I've also been on the, the receiving end of some unhappy people, which is normal. So um, you have to keep your, your mind healthy. And do you have any best practices for keeping a healthy mindset throughout the day? Yeah. So it used to be where, and, and I'm going to kind of pivot off of this. It used to be where if you were calling expires, you would call your database, you know, and do those things to kind of break it up and stuff. Um, I'm going to just, that's one thing you could do. I'm going to pivot that into I am a huge, huge fan of circle prospecting. Okay. I I love circle prospecting and I love it for many ways because I have, I mean, I have fun in prospecting and I know that may sound kind of sick and demented to some watching this, but it's, you've got to make it fun. And when you look at it, I have fun with circle because to me, it's just talking to random people. You know, it's, it's doing it from a position of you don't want to pressure them. And what you said a few minutes ago about you've had really great conversations where the person said, I don't even know why I'm talking to you. I literally, you know, told everybody else to go pound sand. Well, <laughs> I would say, I would say in some way you probably pulled pressure off. That's the name of the game right now. Okay. If you could have a conversation and ask some questions with no pressure at all, that's where you're going to have that reaction and that strength come in from the calls. So, you know, the one way to, to, to do that is, you know, focus on your mindset and look at what's throwing your mindset off. And if it's somebody that's giving you a hard time at the other, on the other end of the phone, mm -hmm. look at how much of that you possibly could be feeding into. Yeah. You know, if you've got a need for the business, if you've got, you know, if you, if you sound like you're pushing them, make sure your script, the questions that you're asking, they're not too direct. They're not too pushy. Mm -hmm. You know, make sure that that is, you know, something that you're doing, personalize your, your conversation where use the words that's appropriate in your market and not just because it's on the script. That's what I have to say. Yes. Yes. That's huge. So, you know, do those things and generally mindset won't falter too much. And if it does, and you start to have some mindset challenges, take a break, refresh, you know, put it in perspective, what, what's really going on and what you're really doing and just kind of tie your why back to it. Well, I'm sold on you, Coach Joe. <laughs> I'm serious. I'm Let's go. Let's you, prospect. <laughs> you said so many awesome things, and I'm thrilled. I'm I'm happy I got to have you on the show, and I really appreciate you and your busy schedule um, coming out and doing this for everybody today. How can other agents like myself reach out to you? Uh, you could email me. You could shoot me a text. You could email me at jbowalik at yourcoach.com. Okay. Um, you could shoot me a text to myself, 860-378-4920. Um, however you need to reach me, I'm pretty easy to find. If awesome. you go on to, if you go on to uh, TomFerry.com and you look at the Speaker Bureau, I'm in I'm one of the speakers in the Speaker Bureau. You could reach out to me through there. All right, cool. So prospecting boot camp. I might have to give it a try. <laughs> yeah, it's fun. We have a great time. Yeah, no, it sounds like it. I mean, you, you've been wonderful. So I, I bet it's a good time to show up for. Thank you so much for coming on today. Yeah, thanks for having me.